In the last lesson you learned how to write code for your applications. You've typed a few lines of code in event handlers to enable your buttons to respond when your users click on them. The amount of code that you typed is really just a drop in the bucket compared to programs that programmers write in the industry. In some programs a programmer writes hundreds or even thousands of lines of code. With such a big program it is very easy to get lost in your code. Sometimes, programmers must revisit code that they've written before. You wouldn't believe how easy it is to forget what you've done before and how much time goes into analyzing old code. It is therefore also easy to get lost in code that you've written a while ago. By styling and documenting your code, you can make life a lot easier for yourself. It actually removes all the clutter and guesswork. You can really write code in such a way that reading it is straightforward and simple. One of the major benefits is that well-documented and stylish code can help you to identify and fix errors more efficiently. I mentioned before that it is not unusual in the programming world to have two or three people working on the same program. In some programming teams you may even find 20 to 30 programmers working on the same project. Not all programmers think alike and not all programmers use the same methodology when writing code. If you do work in a team, it is sometimes necessary to work on another team member's code or to integrate your work with the rest of the team. It can be really very difficult to read and understand other people's code, but the same applies for other people that must read your code. If the entire team applies the same style and if everybody writes well-documented code, the whole team will understand each other's code. They can then move forward faster and they can be more productive. If you are still in school or college, your teachers must assess your program. They must read code written by many pupils or students. And they do get frustrated if your code is not neat and tidy, or if they must spend hours to figure out what you are trying to do. By writing stylish code and by documenting your code you make the assessment process easier. That makes it more convenient for your teacher to read your code and if you have a happy teacher, you can score big time. Now, let's go and see how we can improve the readability of the code that we wrote in the previous lesson. Here, you can see the code editor window and the click event handlers for the Afrikaans and English buttons. Documenting your code means that you are explaining to yourself or your teammates or your teacher what your code means. We call this writing comments. For example, the purpose of the first three lines under the begin statement is to change captions. So, let's explain to anyone that reads this code that these lines change captions. I want to put my explanation or comment above the three lines, in other words directly under my begin statement. My comment must read, change the form and labels caption to English. You can also add comments after an instruction to explain what the purpose of that instruction is. Let's do that. After the first line, I type the comment, first name to numnam. After the second line, I type surname to fun. And after the third instruction, my comment is translation to vertalen. Now let's run the application to make sure everything is still fine. Click the run button in the speed bar. Delphi is not happy with that. As you can see, Delphi doesn't want to run the program. You know that Delphi is complaining if you see that ugly maroon line in your code. And you can also see a list of error messages in the bottom of the code editor. The reason we get errors is because Delphi doesn't understand all the English words. Delphi is strictly defined which means it uses its own vocabulary and it has its own grammar and language rules. Delphi will therefore not understand it if you type sentences in natural English. This means that you must make your comments invisible to the Delphi compiler. In other words, you must tell Delphi to ignore your comments. To do that, you use two slashes in front of your comments, like this. Notice that the commented line turned blue and it changed to an italic font. That is how you know that Delphi will ignore that line. We also need to add slashes to the comments we added after our instructions, so let's do that. Now all our comments are invisible to Delphi's compiler. Let's run the application again to make sure that Delphi is now happy. Click on the English and Afrikaans buttons. As you can see, Delphi doesn't complain anymore. 
Close the form to go back to design time. I will now go ahead and also document the remaining code in this event handler. I also want to comment the code in the click event handler of the Afrikaans button. This time I'm going to do it a little different. Instead of adding my comments after the instructions, I write them all above the code. In this example, I must begin all my comment lines with two slashes. However, there is another way to comment multiple lines. Let's first remove all the slashes. We know now that Delphi will complain if we do not make these lines invisible to the compiler. If your comment spans multiple lines, you can comment a whole block by starting your comment with a curly brace. As you can see, all the lines are now blue and all the lines have an italic font. That means that we also made the code that Delphi must execute invisible to the compiler. The last end statement in the code editor is used by Delphi to end the whole unit. It is essential that it is always visible to the Delphi compiler. But because we used the curly brace, that line is now also invisible to Delphi's compiler. Just to show you what I mean, I will run the application. There you can see, Delphi complains again and this time it puts the maroon line on the bottom of the code editor. This happened because the compiler doesn't see the last end statement. To fix this problem, you must also indicate where your comment is finished. To do that, you close the comment with a curly brace, behind the last line of your comment. And there you see, only the comment is now invisible to the compiler. Run the application again and test the buttons to make sure that Delphi is now happy. Close the form to return to your code. I will now remove the curly braces to show you another way to comment multiple lines. I open the comment by typing a bracket and an asterisk in the front. When doing that, all the lines underneath this line, including the code, is now invisible to Delphi's compiler. To fix that, you must close the comment by typing an asterisk and a bracket after the last comment line. Alright, and that is how you document your code to explain to yourself and others what the purpose of your code is. But if we look at the two event handlers, they look even worse than before. The code looks very cluttered and difficult to analyze. One of the ways to make our code more stylish and easier to read is to do indentation. It works like this. The begin and end statements indicate where the main processing starts and where it finishes. All the statements between the begin and end statement are nested statements or children of this one main process. The nested instructions, in other words the lines of code between the begin and end statements, can be indented by using the tab key on your keyboard or by pressing the spacebar a few times. I prefer to press the spacebar three times when doing indentation. All the lines between the begin and end statements must be aligned or on the same level. Now it is easier to read where the main process starts and where it ends. Another way to improve the readability of your code is to use blank lines to separate instructions that are related. Think of it in the same way as starting a new paragraph when writing a letter or an essay. For example, these three instructions are changing captions, while these two instructions are changing left positions. So I press the Enter key on my keyboard to separate the two batches. As you can see, it is now clear to anyone that you have two distinct batches of code in the same event handler. Let's do the same in the click event handler of the Afrikaans button. But let's also add the comment for the last two instructions. Ok, that's better. Earlier I mentioned that not all programmers think alike, and that they do the same things in different ways. 
For example, in this click event handlers, I first change the captions of my components and then I change the left positions. Another programmer may have done it in a different way. For example, he may have done it like this. Let's add a blank line after the first instruction. Now, let's move this line to the blank line. Highlight the line and drag it up. Add another blank line after that line. Make another blank line after this line. Let's now drag this line into the blank space. And make another blank line after that line. Because our code sequences are different now, we must now also change the wording of the comments. So I will go ahead and change the comments. This comment now indicates that I'm changing the caption and the left property of the label called LBL first name. Let's copy that comment and paste it above the next two statements. Now let's go and change the comment to indicate that we are changing the caption and left properties the label called LBL surname. The comment on the bottom has no purpose, so I'm going to delete it. Now let's also comment the last instruction to indicate that we are changing the caption of the form. As you can see here, the instructions are exactly the same as before, except that the order in which Delphi will execute them is different. In this case, I group my statements so that I change all the properties of LBL first name first, and then I change the properties of LBL surname, and finally, I change the caption property of the form. Run the application and test the Afrikaans and English buttons. As you can see, you still get the same results as before. The idea here was to show you that two different programmers can achieve the same outcomes by writing the code in different ways. Close the form to return back to your code. When you change the properties of the same component like we did here and here, there is another stylish way to do that. You can enclose the property changes in a width block. Let me show you how. Let's first do it for the properties of LBL first name. I delete the instructions and then I type with LBL first name do. On the next line I type a begin statement. Press the enter key to go to the next line and press it again to leave a blank line. On the next line type end. The with statement also has a starting point and an ending point. Any line that you type between the begin and the end statements are nested statements or child instructions of the with statement. This with statement refers to the label called LBL first name in its header. So now I can change the label's properties between the begin and the end statements without referring to the LBL first name for every property that I want to change. This is how it is done. Type caption, followed by the assignment operator, followed by the value, and close the instruction. To change the left position of LBL first name, I go to the next line and I type left, followed by the assignment operator, followed by the value, and I enter instruction with a semicolon. You see, here I do not have to type LBL first name dot caption or LBL first name dot left like I had to do before. I start with the property, in this case caption, and in that case left. Any property that I change between the begin and end statements automatically belongs to the component referenced in the with statement. In this case, LBL first name. Notice that my end statement also ends with a semicolon. Also, notice that I indented the two nested lines to indicate that these lines are children of the width block. Now, do the same with the label called LBL surname. Above the two lines that change the properties, type with LBL surname do. Type the begin statement on the next line. And type the end statement under the second instruction. Remove LBL surname and the dot from both instructions and press the spacebar a few times to indent these two lines. 
As you can see, our code is a lot easier to read now. It is now also easy to change more properties for the two labels. Let me show you how. Let's say that both labels must change to red if we click on the English button. All we need to do is to append the property changes in the width block like this. In this width block change the color property to CL red. And do the same in this width block. Before I run the application, just look at the end statements of both with blocks. I didn't finish this end statement with a semicolon. But let's run the application in any case to see if Delphi is happy with that. Ah, I knew that this would happen. Delphi gives me an error. The maroon line is on the next line and not on the line that caused the problem. Because I didn't tell Delphi's compiler in the previous line that I'm finished with the instruction, the compiler assumes that the next line is part of this instruction. Therefore, execution stops on the line that follows the line that caused the error. You can also see the error message at the bottom of the code editor. It reads, missing operator or semicolon. Type a semicolon after the end statement to fix the error. Now run the application again. Click the Afrikaans button. Click the English button. And there, Delphi also changes the labels to red as we instructed in the two with blocks. Close the form to return back to the code editor. As you can see, your code is much easier to read. That makes it more convenient for you, your teachers and your teammates. In this application, we first used code that was already functional. Later we added comments and after that we styled the code by using blank lines, indentation and so on. After you write a few applications, it will not be necessary for you to do it like this. It will become second nature to you to apply these principles from the start. In other words, you will become proficient in making your code functional, stylish and descriptive, all at the same time. You must just get your hands dirty and practice. Soon you will have lots of fun. In the next lesson, we will change more properties in code. I will teach you how to work with properties called Boolean properties. See you later!